Despite the trend in recent years of people spending loads of money getting a bike fit, if all you want to do is get your saddle in the right place, that's not actually necessary. Here are a few simple steps that will mean that you can get your saddle position in the right place. Now at the end of the video, I'll also compare it to my current saddle height and position, and then we'll see whether or not these methods have actually got me close to where I need to be. We'll start by adjusting the saddle height. Now a great way of doing this is to put your bike on an indoor trainer, but you can actually do it out on the road as well, just be careful. So jump on your bike, you want to put the heel of your foot on the pedal, and at this point your leg should be locked out. But we're also now going to actually try and pedal to make sure that your pelvis isn't rocking from side to side. It's remarkably difficult. So you can see that my leg isn't quite locked out at the bottom of the stroke, so I perhaps need to put my seat up a little bit. I think that's ballpark. Right, with the saddle height roughly ballpark, we're now going to look at how fore or aft your seat is. Now, to do that, the adjustment is normally made by just loosening one or two bolts on the seat post here, depending on the design of it. And before we actually start, I've got to stress that the bike must be completely level, so we've already been at it with a spirit level to make sure that this is going to work. Then, it's a case of using a plumb line. Hmm. With your feet in normal riding position now, you want to have your cranks horizontal, and then you need to drop your plumb line from the bony bit at the back of your kneecap. That should bisect your pedal axle. So this is called the COPS method, and it does have its critics. We'd be the first to admit, in fact, that it's got its limitations. So you will need to fine tune, kind of depending on what sort of rider you are. If you ride in quite a stretched out position, then you'll probably find that you need to move the saddle forward slightly, whereas if you ride in a very relaxed position with upright handlebars and a shorter stem, then you may need to go backwards. Next, it's really important to make sure your saddle is level. If it's tilted up slightly, it can put a little bit too much pressure on some rather sensitive areas. And if it's pointed too far down, then it puts a lot more weight through your hands and you'll find yourself constantly sliding forward on the saddle. So uh, we think that horizontal is best. If you're racing, the UCI tell you you have to have it horizontally anyway. And to check, all it is is case of getting your trusty spirit level out again, making sure your bike is on level ground and then adjusting it accordingly. So we need to pull that slightly nose down. Once you've performed those three measurements, you then need to jump back on your bike and go through it all again. Because obviously, if you've adjusted your saddle height after you've done the forward and backward, then that will have a bearing on where the seat is placed. If you can, get someone to film you whilst you're riding on the turbo trainer. And then you can get a real idea of how you look when you ride. You particularly want to pay close attention to your pelvis. You don't want that rocking at all because that can get really quite uncomfortable. Now, we do also have to say that to get your really personal bike fit, then you do have to take into account a number of other different factors, like your flexibility, for example, or perhaps more importantly, whether you pedal with your toe down or your heel down. That has quite significant bearing on your saddle height, for example. So once you've got it ballpark, then you can fine tune it to make sure that you are comfortable and powerful. Powerful. As we said at the very beginning, there is some debate as to how you find the exact saddle height for you. But here are a couple of other methods that you might want to try to see whether you can get it a bit more fine-tuned. Now, first of all, do you have a goniometer? No, no, I didn't think so. Neither do we, in fact. But you can pick them up for not too much money. And if you get one, then what it does is it allows you to do the Holmes method. Now, essentially, it allows you to measure the angle of your shin bone in relation to your thigh bone. Holmes worked out through quite a lot of research that the optimum angle for this bit here was 25 to 30 degrees when you're at the bottom of your pedal stroke. Another method is to measure your inside leg. And I'm gonna apologize at this point. We tried to think of a way of doing this without it looking so weird, but we can't. So the best way is to get a long spirit level, <clears throat> to put it between your legs, nestle it snugly to mimic the uh, sensation of a saddle, and then, measure the distance from the end of your spirit level, I'm not joking, to the floor. Now, I will take my shoes off first because I don't want them to alter the value of my inseam, but uh, I'll need to find a willing accomplice to uh, measure this. Anyone? Anyone want to measure it? No. I'm going to have to find like a wall or something. Take a note of that. <sighs> right, according to this, my inseam is, well, 
875 millimeters. Then the next thing you do is you take away 10 centimeters from that and that gives you your saddle height value when measured from the center of the bottom bracket axle to the top of the saddle in line with your seat post. Complicated. So there we have three methods for calculating your saddle height and one of calculating how forward or backward it needs to be. But we said at the beginning of the video that I test it to see how it relates to my own personal position that I've honed over the years. So first things first, this is currently set up for the heel method. And I'll measure from the center of the bottom bracket up to the top of the saddle and it comes out at 760 millimeters. Now that is a quite significant 15 millimeters below where I think I should be, which is 775 millimeters. But interestingly, the final method of measuring my inseam actually gave me exactly that figure, 775 millimeters. Now, that doesn't really mean anything for the general population, but perhaps in this instance, for me, the inseam method was better. However, I do have to say, neither of them take into account the length of my cranks. So in this instance, I'm riding 172.5s, but I normally ride 175s. But then what happens if I was on 167.5s? It's a fairly big variation there. And also, it doesn't take into account the stack height, both of my shoe and of the pedal, which is, can be quite a significant value there. So the lesson from all of this is that all these methods will get you ballpark, but you have to fine tune it for yourself to find which is most comfortable and most powerful. Make any adjustments to your position, then do so gradually because actually you can end up injuring yourself more by changing to the correct position than you would do if you kept with your old position. And it's always a good idea to make a note of where you started so that you can always go back to original position. So take a measurement from the center of the bottom bracket to the top of the saddle and from the nose of the saddle to the handlebars. And that pretty much tells you your rough parameters. To look at another aspect of your bike fit, which is how high and how far away your handlebars need to be, why not click up there and watch a video specifically about that. Then to adjust your cleats on your shoes, we've got a video about that. Just click down there and you can go straight through and watch it. And finally, to never miss another GCM video, which I'm sure you don't want to do, why don't you subscribe by clicking on me.